Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Some of you may or may not know that uh, I am a veteran. I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. So today, my show is for Veterans Day, and it's thanking all the veterans out there for their service and what they did, especially all the people on board USS Theodore Roosevelt that I served on, all the guys I worked on the flight deck, and especially my special close friends, uh, Jim, Jamie, <laughs> Johnny, Sam, Mike, Toms. I love you guys and miss you guys. I'd like to dedicate today's show to my dad and to my little brother, both of them veterans, uh, both of them army veterans. Um, all three of us are combat veterans. We all served in wars, um, but I was the only one smart enough to join the Navy, right? The other two guys joined the army. Anyway, uh, happy Veterans Day. I love y'all, I miss y'all. Hope y'all enjoy the show. So today, since the United States Navy says we are forged by the sea, I'm cooking seafood, right? Shrimp and crab stew. For all my people out there, all my veterans out there today, shrimp and crab stew. You're gonna absolutely love it. Uh, it's gonna be a little lengthy. I'm gonna show you how to cook a roux. I'm gonna show you how to make it all come together. It, it, it is a fantastic meal. It's, it's really a big favorite over here in South Louisiana. So stay tuned, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see y'all in the kitchen. Oh yeah, and go Navy, beat Army. feeling today before we start our meal right here and we get our 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 stew going what I want to do first is is make a roux now a lot of people here in South Louisiana we, we privileged to be able to buy a jar of roux and there's nothing wrong with that those roux are fine but if you want to have an authentic Cajun meal you need to learn how to cook a roux so first thing we're gonna start with is cooking our roux and the first thing we're gonna start with is our oil and our flour and then we're gonna chop these onions and we're going to add that in later, right at the end of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big roux. Uh, the weather's about to get cold here probably in about four days. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a roux. And that way we have enough. And when we make our gumbo, we have our own roux. And we don't have to buy any, right? So we're going to get that going. I'm going to get the roux going. And while that roux gets going, we need to get these uh, onions and bell pepper cut. Onion cutter! Remember Proby? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Onion Cutter's here. He's working with us today. Let's go ahead and get that started. I'm going to do you a favor today. I'm going to let you use the beer cutting board there, Onion Cutter. How about that? Sounds good. All right, stay tuned. I'm going to teach you how to cook this roux. I promise you, you're going to love it. Okay. What we started with is four cups of oil. Four cups of cooking oil. We're gonna let that get heated up and then we're gonna match that four cups of cooking oil with four cups of flour. Listen, it's an easy base to remember. However much oil you put, you put the same amount of flour. Some people have different recipes and that's fine. To make the ratios the way you wanna do, we keep it simple. Same amount of oil, same amount of flour. At the end of your stew, if you wanna take the oil out, you can. So that's the easiest way to remember how to do that. Same oil, same flour, okay? All right, that's what we got. We got our four cups of flour, we got our four cups of oil in here, and basically the only thing we didn't have to do now is stir this and uh, get that consistency we want and get the color we want. Believe it or not, the color is important here, especially here in South Louisiana. So stay tuned, we'll have to be stirring on this. We'll show you how this gets going in a minute. Alright, as this is kind of cooking down, two important notes 
that you want to have when you're making a roux. Number one, do not put this on high. You do not want to cook that on high. This will burn very easy. You will have to stir consistently and constantly. Okay, so do not put this on high. If anything, you want to get it started, we'll start with a, a medium high, if anything, and then we'll just kind of kick that back at about a medium fire right there, okay? Number two, you need a flat spoon. If you don't have a flat spoon, you can get a wooden spoon that's flat and, and get that. You need to get in these creases right here. If you don't have a spoon that's going to allow you to get in these creases, you're going to burn your roux and your stew and your gumbo or whatever you're making a roux for, it's going to taste burnt. So, as we get going right here, I'm going to show you the, the consistency we need and I want to show you the color we need for the simple reason that whatever color your roux is, that's what color your gumbo is going to be. So hang with me. We'll get stirring here. Robin, <laughs> how the onion cutting coming? Think I'll be crying, man. Why are you crying, bro? <laughs> you ain't no crying in the fire department, man. Think crying at the firehouse? Huh? No crying at the firehouse, man. Think I'm all water. I got them, them, them good onions that make them cry good. Onion cutter. You know the secret to cutting onions and not crying? What's that? Chewing a piece of gum. Chew a piece of gum, never cry. Believe that that's true and it works. You got some gum? You got some gum in my truck. Right, stay with it. If not, you don't have to just cry. Get some gum and let's see if that works. Will do. Alright. Alright, what we're doing right here is, as you can see, we're going to start to cook down a little bit. And you, and you can see the color. It went from white to almost like an almond color. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over, see how this is starting to brown, okay? That's why we got to stir constantly or you will burn this, okay? So remember, we want to get this thing all brown. We're going to have to stir on this quite a bit, okay? And listen, another good thing you're going to need when you're making a roux is a good vent. If you don't have a good vent, and be smoking up your house. And another thing, your house is gonna smell like roof for about a week. But that's okay, I like the smell of roof, so I'm good with that. All right, everybody, we have Mr. Charles Duyon right here. We relieve each other over here at Station 9 in the morning. Charles is captain over here on A Crew. He's also a veteran of the United States Army. Thank you for your service, man. Happy Veterans. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Happy Veterans. Day. Happy Veterans. Day. All right, come on in here, let, let me show you something. A lot of people think that your roux should be the consistency of peanut butter and should look like peanut butter. And that's fine. If you want your roux to look like this, this is what your gumbo is going to look like. Okay? I do not my, want my roux to look like this. I want it to look like this dark right here. That's the kind of roux I'm looking for, okay? So when you're making a dark roux like that, it's a very fine line from there to burnt. So it's a constant constant stir okay constant stir and I'll show you what we're gonna look like in a minute and then what we're gonna do what right when it's it, to stop it from cooking that hard we're gonna throw our onions and bell peppers in there it's gonna cool it off a little bit and then stop that that burn from going through there so it's gonna be constant and consistent from here on out see how we're getting right there constant and consistent you can't let it sit long you got to stir this thing a lot. Alright, as you can see we're starting to get darker right here. So we're getting darker, it's gonna, it's gonna burn a lot faster than we want it to. So what we do is we're gonna drop this down almost to low. Our back burn is a little small burner so we'll keep it on the medium. But it's gonna be constant, quick stirring right here. And as you can see we are already getting darker, okay? So if we made our, our roux right now, or we made our stew right now, this will kind of be the consistency that we like. And this is pretty close. I like that color. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. But this is pretty close. Alright, come on in here. This is it. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, you see this color? How we dark brown? 
This is where we want to be, okay? It's a fine line. But right here, you want to make sure nothing's burning in these corners. That's why we had that spoon. Takes care of all of that, right? And then we're going to flip this out. Clean all our corners out. And what we want to try and do is, especially while we're here, we're going we're gonna to spread this all out where we want it to be. Look at that roux. Isn't that beautiful? That looks phenomenal. That is beautiful. All right? And one thing we're going to do right here, we're going to turn all the way low on both sides. And what we're going to do is we're going to dump our onions and our bell peppers in here and we're going to season it. A lot of people don't season their roux. I always season my roux. Okay? So let me get this mixed up so we don't get burnt right here. One good mix. One more time. Onion cutter, you ready? Yep. You ready? Okay? I dumped that in there. Let me see right here. This is gonna do I'm gonna cook these onions down. Alright? Now as this cooks it down a little bit, you can see it's kind of cooling that roux off, right? Alright, cooling that roux off. Now what's gonna happen is gonna make our roux a little darker, especially when we're gonna season it too. So we're gonna take our Captain Colbers right here, right? We're gonna season this nicely. That way when you season your roux, whatever you put it in there, it's minimal what you have to season later. Okay? So, you know me, I like to come with it. You come in with it. Okay? All right. All right. We have Mr. Jerome Joseph, Chief Joseph. He is my chief over here in District 1. He is also a veteran. He is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah. And I have no idea why they put up with this guy as long as they did. But they did it. He made it, they made it out, and now we got to put it with him over here on the, at the fire department. So, anyway, happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to you too. Thank you for your service, sir. Uh, thank you. Got it. All right, listen, still want to stir as, we, as the onions and bell peppers are cooking down. Okay, that's a jump start on cooking the onions and bell peppers right here. And this is pretty much it. Again, this is what I this is what our stew is gonna look like. This is the color of the roux with everything in there, how it's gonna look. Okay? And seasoning your roux kind of helps darken it up a little bit as well. We're gonna take it off. Alright, we're just gonna stir it for uh for a minute while it's cooling. Listen, a good idea, wear a long sleeve shirt when you're cooking this, it will pop on you, that's a promise. Now I'm wearing my long sleeve shirt today because it's a little cool outside and it's my neighbor's shirt. But anyway, wear your long sleeve shirt, it will pop on you. Right, my group? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Even when you film it, they'll pop on you. All right, everybody, what we have here, we took a little bit of roux out. We saved our roux for uh, this, this gumbo we're gonna make with this cold weather coming. And what we have right here is, the amount of roux we have left is about four heaping spoonfuls like this, full. That's what I like. We want our stew to be real thick. I like my stew thick. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna pour some water in here, we're gonna stir this and we're gonna let that break apart and we're just gonna let it cook. We're gonna probably let this cook for a minimum of about two hours, okay? Uh, some people like to let that go a little bit longer but I think two hours would be good enough to uh, be able to drop our shrimp and our crab in there and once that's in there, that doesn't take that long to get it to go. But what I like to do is about four heaping spoonful, especially for a big pot like this, and I want to have a thick roux, and this is how it's done. So what we're going to do is, we have our roux in here, I'm going to add this water. Okay, and when we're going to stir this in, we're going to crank this on high. We need this to get boiling. So 
while that's getting boiling right here, we just gonna stir this nice and easy. We don't want any of that stuff to stick on the bottom of our pot or guess what happens? It burns and we don't want it burn. I'll show you how that looks. All right, as you can see, this is thickening up already. I already put a big old cup in here. It's getting hot. We got that water, the, the fire high. So I'm gonna add a whole nother cup in here. Now listen, remember when I first told you what your stew was gonna look like. This is what it's gonna look like. Didn't lie to you. See the color of that? That's gonna be the color of our stew. Isn't that beautiful? Keep this stirring till this gets to boiling real good. And we're gonna add one more cup of water because that's how thick our stuff is gonna be. Now listen, it looks really thick now, but I only have two cups of water. We're gonna get this thing filled up to water about right here, or right here, can you see that? About right here, and it's not gonna be as thick. And once it cooks down, it comes together. Some of that water starts to go out. It's gonna be thick. Okay, and that's the consistency we want. All right, now we got this boiling right there. You see we got a good little boil to that. Okay, I'm gonna scratch this one good time all the way through. Make sure nothing's sticking on there, which it should be good. I've been stirring this pretty constantly. Okay, make sure nothing's sticking on this bottom. All this should be separated, all right? It should have nothing thickness left to that roof. I'm doing this probably about a good 30 minutes. Right now that this is boiling real well, drop this down to about a medium fire. This one will leave at a, at a medium high in the back because it's a small burn. Okay. All right. And we're gonna let it cook. I'm gonna come babysit or stir every now and then for about two hours. All right, guys. I uh. All the guys that we have come and talk to everybody they are that, are, that I am introducing today are all veterans uh, who are on the fire department. We have absolutely no Coast Guard guys. But Chris, I work with Chris in the Safety Management Systems. We teach fire classes together over there at Safety Management Systems. So I want to tell you, thank you for your service. Thank you, man. Happy Veterans Day. Appreciate it. God, Coasty. How about it, huh? All right, I want to show you something right here. When we cover this pot, as you see, we're boiling pretty good. I don't want to put it down here like this because what happens the steam is going to come it's going to start overflowing or your water steam will come back down and get into your fire so what we want to do is want to crack it just a little bit and if you use self rising flour when you make your roux that thing will bubble up and want to overflow so if you put the lid on it I promise you it will overflow so I want to crack that lid a little bit let the steam come out it'll keep a little bit of heat in there but it won't it won't keep all the heat in there, so it'll kind of let it breathe a little bit. So we'll leave it like that for now. All right, come back and check on this in about 20 minutes, every 20 minutes. And um, when it comes down to putting the shrimp in there, be ready for that. All right, everybody, we've been going down for about an hour and a half. And I want to show you this right here. See how this is so thick? This is almost like, uh, I would say, close to melted ice cream. That's how thick we want to have our root. Okay, uh, we're close to putting our uh, our shrimp in there. I'm gonna wait for a second. Let it go. Probably about another 30 minutes. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. But what we want to do right here is I want to taste it. And the reason I want to taste it, I want to taste it just for the seasoning content. It's, it's gonna taste bad. It tastes like flour and oil together. It really doesn't have any taste. What makes the taste? And there's the shrimp or chicken or whatever you put in there. That's the flavor that you get out of that. So right now we want to taste this just to try to taste how much heat and how much seasoning that we're going to have in there. We may, want, we may want to add a little bit before we put our shrimp in. Definitely need some seasoning. Put a little Captain Colby's in there. Okay. Let's 
There it is in. Right, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. Maybe half of that. And let this cook in. Because when we add our shrimp and our crab in there, it's gonna be awesome. All right, same thing. Crack lid, let it go about 30 minutes. Come in here and add our shrimp and crab. Let that go probably about another four to five minutes an hour and be eating, baby. Right. After two hours of cooking, this is what we look like. And this is kind of the consistency we want. You see how thick this is? And it's like melted ice cream right there, right? That is kind of what we're looking for, okay? That's the consistency we want, okay? Got my fire down real low. We're about to drop in this crab meat. I got some crab claw meat already peeled. And what I like to do is I like to buy the shrimp. I buy this from a food wholesaler. And the reason why I buy this shrimp, it is five pounds of peeled shrimp. It doesn't have the head, it doesn't have the shell. It comes in frozen solid. And what's good about this is it kind of makes its own stock. This, all this frozen stuff in here is a frozen chunk of ice and all the water that's around the shrimp makes its own stock. If I had to peel my shrimp, if I had bought some, some shrimp with the head on it and peeled, I would peel that, I would put it in the bag and make my stock and feed it into here. But since I don't and it already comes with it, we're just gonna drop that in there, okay? First thing I wanna put in here is this crab meat. This is gonna be this gives it. This is the kick. This is the little extra that makes it taste nice, right? A lot of people do shrimps too, shrimp and eggs too. I like shrimp and crab meats too. Not that there's anything wrong with the other, it's just how I prefer mine. Okay. Just broke up and stirred in there a little bit. And what we're gonna do, once this is all in, we're gonna add a little water, we're gonna add our shrimp, and then we're gonna let it cook down again to almost the same consistency, except for all our shrimp and our crab in there all together, okay? Beautiful. All right. All right, just drop this big old five pound blocker. shrimp right in here what I want to do is just add a little bump of water on top of that I'm gonna let it cook down all right come back and check in about 20 minutes all right, we have Mr. Clarence Chambers here today. He is an Air Force veteran. He's also an engineer in the Lafayette Fire Department. Uh, I think you're still in the Air Force, right? Yeah. You're still in the Reserve? Yeah, I'm in the right. Reserve, yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Hey, Veterans Day, man. Wow, uh, same. Yes, sir. Trying to make potato salad, but probably been at this for about two hours now. It's like nine potatoes in two hours. Good God almighty. These youngsters, what I'm gonna do? Hey, Proby. You know when I was in the Navy? You got in trouble, you know what you had to do? What's that? Peel potatoes, but that's why I'm so good at peeling potatoes. I stayed in there peeling potatoes. <laughs> no, they didn't have that. You cannot be serious. <laughs> Come here and see what this kid did. <laughs> My God. I told this boy put some eggs in the potato salad so we can boil them and this is what the boy he's cracking eggs like we having fried eggs in potato salad. Oh my god. You're gonna be egg cracker, you ain't gonna be egg cracker here pretty soon. You can't even make that stuff up. Are you serious? All right, it's in there. It's been cooking for two hours because we've been stuck on a vehicle accident. But uh, let's check what we got.
Isn't that awesome? Look at this gravy right here. Beautiful. Just like our roux, right? Same color. I'm gonna get us some shrimp. And a little bit of uh, Price's uh, drop egg in the middle of the potatoes, potato salad right here. Now we're gonna go ahead on and eat this. All right, we'll taste this up. Phenomenal. Oh my goodness, I might have four plates today. Listen, happy Veterans Day everybody. And in the words of a American hero, Master Gunnery Sergeant Carl Cole. Have a great American day. See y'all next week. See y'all in the kitchen, babe.